hope you're doing great. Thanks for joining me this week. Today's show is going to be an intermission. Uh, so we're just going to talk about some stuff. And I think I mentioned in the last video that I'd be talking about some of the tools that I use. But I decided to change it up a little bit. So what I'm going to talk about is the process I go through when I'm making a uh, one of these videos. When I'm making an Arduino tutorial video. Um, you know, whether you're interested or not, I don't know, but uh, I just kind of show you how I how I do it. So uh, first off, like when I'm talking about process, if I'm going to do anything more than three times, I usually make some type of checklist for myself or some type of flow, sh flow chart. So like this, for example, I don't know how well it's going to uh, take it here. I don't know how well this is going to be pictured. This, for example, is the process I came up for making videos. And, you know, it's a little flow chart. I kind of follow it step by step. Um, walk through it and you know it's nothing special just stuff I've, I've written down it kind of helps me um, make sure that I'm not missing anything and I feel like it helps me stay on track when I'm uh, trying to produce a video another thing that really helps me stay on track is a schedule yes this is an old uh, cork board kind of thing I've got videos I'm gonna make and little pins on it I can pull the pins out and I've since moved this to a digital Google Doc file but it actually you know having it visually being able to see it um, just right in front of me helps me remember you know to hey stay on track that type of thing so let's go ahead and talk about the process so the first thing I do when I am creating a new video is I create a file directory system for where all the files that video for all the files um, that support that video will go. So I have like these default folders set up in my directory system and I just cut and paste those into a new folder. Uh, that way all the files, so every time I make a new video all the files are always in these same type of folders. So that really helps me stay organized. So once I've created the folder where all of the support files are going to go for the video, then what I do is I go to the first uh, piece of software that I use that, that is just a uh, brainstorming software, mind mapping, whatever you want to call it. And it's called Freenode. And I use the light version. And I basically just start kind of spewing out on here a bunch of thoughts I might have for a video idea. So I, I guess I didn't mention is first I you know basically have an idea of what video I want to make, what kind of general topic I want to um, work on. And so I take that to this software and I start just kind of spitting out ideas, throwing out ideas and topics that I want to touch on. And then once I have got, um, once I've got a bunch of topics and, you know, it kind of spurns my thought process, gets out some more ideas and stuff. Once I've got that down in this um, software, then I transition to a really simple text editing program. The one I use is called, I think it's called TextMate. And, uh, you know, you can actually code in here or whatever, but I use it for kind of free, uh, what's the word I want, like free mind typing. Uh, I don't think that's the word I want. What I'm looking for, what I'm trying to say is I don't want some robust thing that's going to tell me I misspelled a word and I don't want like a bunch of buttons to get in my way. I just want to be able to free write. That was the word I want. So I use this to kind of free write on the topics um, that I highlighted in my mind map. So now I just kind of go through and I start writing out um, my thoughts. And this, this acts, these thoughts kind of act as like a script for uh, the video when I shoot them. Now these videos I don't I don't script out and to be honest it's not it's not the it's really not so much a video script sometimes I go with it sometimes I don't I but it's really just uh, it's an outline that I follow when I actually shoot the video. So once I've kind of so once I've written this script in this text node or rather in this uh, editing software then I transition to uh, the beast of my of my production studio which is Camtasia for Mac. So Camtasia uh, is a screen capture software but you can import video, uh, you can you know record audio, it pretty much does everything. Uh, I l absolutely love Camtasia for Mac. Now I'm not saying I don't uh, want to destroy this program at times also but you know I, sometimes I want to destroy every program I work with because they all kind of tick me off but for the amount of money I paid for this software, which is under a hundred dollars, I've used it so much. I've gotten so much bang for my buck. I just absolutely, I love it. I'd recommend it to anybody. There's a learning curve like any of these uh, programs, but I really enjoy Camtasia for Mac. It, it fits my needs. So what I do once I'm in here is I start kind of building up uh, the shell of the video. So I go ahead and I set some default settings and um, I, you know, import some of the default visual themes and stuff that I like to use. I kind of put that in there. And then I'll go ahead and I'll either do a screen capture or I'll start recording video, um, whatever I need to, to support that video. 
and I'll just pretty much create it all here in Camtasia. So once I've created it in Camtasia, so once I've created it in Camtasia, uh, I save the file and then I export it to an MP4. And once I've exported it to an MP4, then I upload it to YouTube. And then I, I usually schedule it out. So I try to make videos in advance and then schedule them schedule them out in advance. Uh, so uh, part of the reason is because uh, I like to be ahead of schedule. That's always a good feeling. And um, I think, uh, especially this summer, I'm thinking about taking some time off. Um, so uh, if I can do some of this in advance, it gives me, you know, it's less production time I have to spend. Um, in the office kind of thing. So once I've got it uploaded to YouTube, then I go in and uh, I go back to my website and I actually create a post that supports the video. So this video that you're watching right now, there is an associated post over on my website. What I'll do is I'll take the the written text that I, t I talked about before. I'll take that, I take it over to Microsoft Word, and then I start kind of fleshing it out a little bit more, correcting all the editing errors, because again, I'm not, I don't edit it when I'm using that really light text editing software. I just kind of spew it out there. So that's kind of my process again. Um, so really it involves brainstorming what I want to talk about, uh, doing some free writing about that topic, creating the video itself, which is either shooting, you know, using a video camera to shoot, shoot something, or um, creating the, the video in Camtasia itself, doing screen captures, that type of thing. So I find it usually takes me about an hour to an hour and a half to create um, one minute of video. So if I have a 10 minute video, I'm looking at anywhere from 10 to 15 hours of work that goes into preparing, shooting, and I mean that's kind of the whole shebang, getting it uploaded to the page and stuff. So it's a lot of work, but uh, for the most part I enjoy doing it, and uh, hopefully it's helpful to you, uh, the videos are. I'm not sure this video is going to be all that helpful, but I just thought maybe you'd be interested in the process. So hey, that was it uh, for this intermission. I hope maybe you found some use in it, maybe not. Anyway, in next week's video, we're going to talk about the Arduino sketch folder. So basically how Arduino files get saved uh, from the Arduino IDE. And it's actually kind of an interesting video. We get into some of the intricacies of uh, the sketchbook, sketch folders, and all that type of stuff. So hey, I look forward to seeing you then, and I hope you have a great week.